Hi, I'm Hunter Markward. Uh, we have uh, an interesting time in our market right now. We've got a, it's, it's a crazy market. It's a challenging market. You need products. Uh, you need to help incentivize buyers and sellers to make transactions happen right now. At Cross Country Mortgage, I think we're doing that better than any other company out there. Uh, I've got two of my absolute favorite people. I've got Shereen Shackelford and I've got Jerry Sunt uh, with us. Can you just give us a quick background? How long have you been in the industry? How long have you been at Cross Country Mortgage? Sure, you, you start. So it has been 16 years now, uh, since 2007, 16 great years. Um, it's flown by, truly. Um, five years with Cross Country now. Cool. Yep. Um, I've been in since uh, for about 21 years. Uh, I've been in the mortgage industry for 21 years, and I've been with Cross Country for about two and a half years. Wow. So with that, you're both, I would say, you know, as, as, as long as many times as I've talked to you with the products, I mean, you're, you're, you know how to structure clients to buy homes as good as anybody in the company, better. What would you say are the primary products you're utilizing in this market today? I'll start with Jerry. You know, of course, all the basics, you know, the, uh, your Fannie Freddie your, and your government back loans. But also, you know, this is a beauty of cross country is that there's such an array of non-QM mortgages, which a lot of people are not able to qualify without that. So for a lot of investors, let's say, you know, you've got the debt service cover ratio loans, DSCR. Uh, I have seen that come into play so frequently this year where in previous years it wasn't needed. Um, and that's just due to the rise in rates. But it's just there's such an array of products that if someone really wants to get a mortgage, uh, I, there's, there should be a place to be able to get them there. Do you, do you have any idea on percentage of non-QM products that you're closing right now? I mean, if you, clo you probably close 30, 40 transactions a month. How many of those are non-QM? I would say about 15 to 20 percent. Okay. But I also think, by the way, it's worth noting, like in this market, you can't say no to someone that wants to buy a house, mm -hmm. right? And having the products available to you, I mean, that's, it makes you, it makes you or breaks you depending on whether or not your business partners can trust you to get a, get a loan done for a client, period. So with that, Shereen, how about you? The non-QM products and programs available um, is probably the one we're utilizing the most. Um, and it's kind of crazy because the QM products, non-QM that is available now, we're kind of navigating it together with the client and the customer and step away, stepping away from the traditional products and programs, not only to separate ourselves, but because it is, I think, where the market's been missing for so mm -hmm. long. And with cross country, the level of support that we have to take any client, any situation, put an email together, send it to underwriting scenario, let them tell us what's available, not making decisions for customers and clients, and delivering there I think is huge. And 15 to 20% of my book is probably every month, um, the non-QN products and programs, and I'm excited again, I'm learning are new you, things are, and, and new, are new products. Are you seeing it for non-owner or first-time home buyers or all of the above? Yes, I'm seeing it across the board. Um, I'm really loving the bank state pro statement program. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know that the, the one you mentioned also, um, DSCR, but the bank statement program's been really great too because there's been so many clients that have been like, I don't understand. I got great credit and I got lots of money. That doesn't get me anywhere. You know, cash is not king anymore. Yep. And it's been really nice to kind of fill that void. Awesome. Yeah. Jerry, what do you, what do you think are the biggest challenges right now that you're seeing in the industry as a whole? You know, I mean, Obviously, with elevated rates, um, uh, it's harder for people to qualify. So that's number one. Uh, and two, inventory um, is low, you know, just not only locally in Arizona, but nationwide. Um, and third, I think, you know, buyers are nervous. They're, and they need support. They need someone to hold their hand through this process and to say, is this really a good decision right now? Because, you know, a lot of the media is saying, bad time to buy. Right. And, you know, they, people have to be explained, you know, given the rationality of, why it actually is a great time to buy. You know, you kind of go against the herd. Um, and when, you know, as we 
it is predicted that rates will come down next year. And what's going to happen? I mean, for example, we had a product, uh, a, a down payment assistance product, where someone was given three, about 4% in down payment assistance, but the rate was at 6.2%. Mm -hmm. The money was gone. It was supposed to last for four months. It was gone in three weeks. Yeah. So that shows you when the rates do fall, the amount of buyers that are going to come into the market is going to be dramatic. And for a lot of people, they're not going to be able to then negotiate with the seller or they're not going to be able to get concessions or on and on at repairs. I mean, you know, it goes on. So really, uh, to be kind of counter, to think against the grain, uh, that is why it is actually a good time to buy right now. And you can't do that without talking to a client. Correct. Right? I mean, the amount of loan officers right now that are just forwarding a loan application, not doing any upfront due diligence to understand the wants and the needs. I think right now, like the perception of why someone shouldn't buy, as opposed to the reality of why they should, it's like if you don't engage with them to have that conversation, they're never going to understand it. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. So, and you got to listen. You got to listen to their needs and their concerns. Yeah. Shereen, what about you? Biggest, big, biggest challenges you're seeing with buyers right now? I think people are scared and they're waiting. Um, and I don't know necessarily if they know what they were really waiting for because they've been waiting for so long and things probably where they're like, man, I should have done this six months ago or a year ago. And nothing's changing. The climate's staying the same um, and it's getting harder. And, you know, until you go through that a couple times, I think when it's time to pull the trigger, ultimately, I think there's going to be some... Um, you know, some some anger because why didn't I do it, you right. know? And once again, it goes back to that conversation, I think, of getting them on the phone, talking about the climate, talking about the environment we are in, mm -hmm. you know, and where we think it's going. And unfortunately, too, the other problem is I think that current homeowners, um, they're stuck right now because to s switch homes, they're going to possibly, depending on their budget and their flexibility, they're going to have to go to something smaller you know, or stay the same. So why would they leave? Mm -hmm. You know, and in the meantime, the second it's listed, we, you know, we talked about this earlier, the prices of the houses keep going up and up and up because of that, you know, and. So I'm gonna ask you this, cause you're better at it, I think, than yeah. anyone in the company. Down payment assistant programs, how do you mm -hmm. educate a buyer that has no clue, mm -hmm. right? One of the things we talked about earlier is just, I mean, buyers that have never been through this, first time home buyers won, then, buyers that are concerned about their lack of down payment, right? They're nervous mm -hmm. to come talk to you. How do you, how do you get them engaged and help them understand what, you know, if they do qualify for it and how they go about doing it? So I think the biggest thing that is important with a first time home buyer is making sure that they understand that buying a home is, if you know you want to be, buy a home and you're applying to buy a home, as far as products and programs and assistance, we have it all. However, I'm going to be the one to also guide you and say, is this program and product the best or is down payment assistance the best? Maybe it has a better rate. Maybe it's higher. Um, so I tell them once um, their loan application pre-approval is done, house is found, not only will we make sure we present the standard products and programs, but multiple down payment assistance products and programs are available should you qualify. But we'll, we'll talk about it more um, in depth once their application is in and give them a couple options so that they can pick and choose so that they feel like they're in, in control of it. Got it. Absolutely. Jerry, thoughts now, on that? <clears throat> you know, I think one thing that's important to, for navigating is the eye on the prize of why do we even own real estate? Why do we own mm -hmm. a house? Is, you know, it's, first of all, re owning your primary residence is about 60% of someone's wealth when they go to retire. And the earlier that they get in, the better they have for you know that you know wealth to generate over time it's not a short game it's a long game and i just think we have to remind people that that is why you own primary residence you have a, you have a utility of functioning of, of living someplace but then also the wealth that it will generate over over the decades that you're uh, you own multiple homes over over the course of a lifetime i love it so i'm going to put you both on the spot even though you're some of the most successful lenders in the country i think you also look at homeowners as an individual homeowner as opposed to a transaction, which I think a lot of lenders look at people as a transaction as opposed to someone actually buying a home. Your favorite, do you have a favorite story? Do you have a favorite story of, of helping a first time home buyer needing a special product, executing on the loan? 
I'll just put you both on the spot here. Yeah, you want to go? You go first. So, I mean, I think we, we both have had multiple experiences where someone applies for a mortgage. They, they may not even think that they qualify. And then they get in and they are so grateful to be able to, wow, now they see the future in front of them. Like, it's brighter. Like, this is the first step in for, you know, building generational wealth. And where it is the American dream. Mm -hmm. It is the American right. dream. And I know both of us have had gifts brought to our office. And it's like, no, we should be the one giving you gifts to say thank you for letting us work with you on your purchase. But it's, uh, I think that is what is the most rewarding, where you get someone on the phone and they're crying because they're just so happy that it, it all came together for them. Love it. If there's a specific scenario that I had to pull out. I mean, obviously, putting somebody in a home every day is, is amazing. Um, but I would say probably like earlier on in my career, I um, sensed a domestic violence issue, mental health issue mm -hmm. with a single mom. And without saying it, um, I just made sure that that loan was done as quickly as possible. And I didn't necessarily talk about it. And I just you know, woman to woman, you can hear and feel, and she made a few comments. That's probably my most memorable one, knowing that she was able to get out of it and get her kids out of the situation and get into a home. And I think back in the day when those were like 21 day closes, like seven, <laughs> seven eight years ago, yeah. I think we did that loan in like 17 years or 17 days because I was like, I got to get this family out of this situation. Right. That's awesome. Love it. Without calling it out and just, you know, following intuition. I love it. Yeah. Last question, big question. Do you have any thoughts on where the market's going to go over the next five years, Jerry? Um, I mean, I think we're going to, uh, you know, values will continue to rise just because of the limited inventory, right? Simple economics shares with us, you know, if you have high demand and low supply, that's going to push prices higher. That's the reality of it. Um, people uh, do not want to let go of their low mortgage rates. Mm -hmm. You know, as you kind of touched on the point earlier, um, there are people who are kind of feel trapped in their house right now yeah. because they can't afford to go buy another house with, with current rates. Um, so they're, even though they may not like where they live. So, uh, you know, I think rates will come down, although there's no guarantee in the next year to two years. And I think that will hopefully free up some of that inventory where people have the confidence then to move. Uh, and that, again, will just drive values higher over time. I don't think we're going to see the the rises that we saw during the pandemic, but we go back to normalcy, right? You, in, in Arizona, let's say it's, it's about 3.7% per year. That's what I always tell buyers. That's what you should count on. Yep. And I think we're getting back to that, and that's the slow and steady wins the race. Love it. Jerry Shreen, uh, it's an honor to work alongside uh, both of you. So thank you so much for participating in this today. Thank you for sharing your insights, and uh, the whole company appreciates you. Thank, thank you so thank much. You